avoid using VLAN 1 for connections to your access ports. But I'm not gonna let that stop me. I'm basically messing around with the network. I wanna thank Boson Software for sponsoring this video and also collaborating with me on the Boson Bumble Eight Weeks to CCNA program. This is a program where you get mentored instruction from a CCI instructor. You have access to the Boson courseware, you have access to the Boson NetSim, Boson XM and a whole bunch of other benefits as part of this program. Brian, who's the CCI instructor on this program, will mentor you over the period of eight weeks to get ready to pass your CCNA exam. If you're interested in taking a mentored program to get your CCNA, use the links below. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use a simple Python script to do VLAN hopping. I've seen a lot of people online say that this is no longer possible, but that's because they only used a certain type of VLAN hopping. I've discovered a way to hop from one VLAN to another by using a simple Python script and stacking 802.1Q frames. I'll also show you at the end of this video how to mitigate against this. You need to be careful how you configure your switches to stop VLAN hopping. In this topology, I've got two switches, switch one and switch two. These are Cisco 1000 series switches here on my desk. I've updated the software on the switches. So this switch as an example is running the latest version. I've got a Kali virtual machine connected to Gigabit 101 on switch two. The switch is connected to switch one on Gigabit 1010, but I've also got a tap on that link so that I can capture traffic and show you what the 802.1Q tags look like. So the two switches, are connected to the tap using port 1010, and then it's connected to my Mac so that I can capture the traffic. So basically, we'll see what Python does when we send frames from the Kali virtual machine to the network. A copy of the frames will be sent to my Mac, and I'll capture that in Wireshark, and then the frame will be sent to switch one, and then we'll be able to see what happens on the network. A lot of people, as I've said, have tried this, and there are articles online saying that this doesn't work on modern Cisco switches, but I'm not gonna let that stop me. Don't believe what you read online, as they say. Try things for yourself, and I'm gonna show you how my simple Python script can circumvent VLANs. So I'll start Wireshark on my Mac, and I'll capture traffic on the Ethernet Zero interface. You can see a bunch of traffic like broadcast, you can see per VLAN spanning tree messages and other messages on the network, but I'm gonna filter for ICMP because I'm gonna use Python and Scapy on this virtual machine to send traffic into the network, and I'll show you what happens with the tags. Okay, so this Kali virtual machine is connected to Gigabit 101 on the first switch. What I'll do here is run Wireshark so that we can see the frames generated by the virtual machine, but the important piece is to view the traffic on the Mac. That will show us if the switch has actually accepted the frames and where it's sending it into the network. Okay, so what I'll do here on Kali is filter for ICMP, and let's have a look at the hop node tag first. So nano hop node tag, this Python script imports Scapy. I'm just importing all of Scapy. Now I'll show you scripts in a moment where I'm crafting an 802.1Q header. This one doesn't have an 802.1Q header. We've created a variable and we're going to set the destination ethernet frame to a broadcast. So we're basically sending a broadcast into the network. What we're then gonna do is stack another layer and we're just gonna continue the line rather than having one long line. This just tells Python that this is part of the same line. I'm gonna set the source to 10122 and the destination to 10123. Now in our network, the Windows 11 computer has an IP address of 10123 on the Ethernet 4 interface. That's the interface connected to our network. What I'll do here is also start Wireshark so we can see what traffic arrives or is received by the Windows 11 computer. So I'll capture Ethernet 4. You can see spanning tree messages from a Cisco switch, some other Cisco messages, but I'll filter for ICMP. Let's see if traffic sent on VLAN 1 ends up in VLAN 2. Very important to mention, the Kali virtual machine is in VLAN 1. The Windows 11 computer is in VLAN 2. They shouldn't be able to talk to each other. 
but Python will allow us to do that. We're then sending ICMP at layer four. So layer two ethernet broadcast, layer two is a source address of this, destination address of this, ICMP at layer three. This will allow us to see the packet and this is actually gonna send the packet into the network. So sudo, I wanna use sudo privileges to send traffic into the network. I'm using Python three, hop note tag, py is my script. Press enter, put in my Kali password. That's what we send into the network. Layer two is this destination, MAC address, source MAC address are a bunch of zeros. The type field at layer two is telling us that IP version four is used at layer three. We can see IP version four, source, destination IP address, protocol used at layer four, if you like, is ICMP. It's an echo request message. Packet was sent into the network. So in Wireshark, that's what we see. We can see source and destination MAC address, source and destination IP address. We can see that's an ICMP message we didn't get a response. So Wireshark is just telling us that no response was received. Okay, but let's have a look at this link where we've got our tap. What does the MAC show us? Basically the same information, source and destination, MAC addresses, source and destination IP addresses, and ICMP echo request. No response was received. That's because on the Windows 11 computer, the frame didn't arrive. The switches are doing what they're supposed to be doing. VLAN one can't talk to VLAN 2. Now the Kali virtual machine is connected to gigabit 101 on switch 2. That should be in VLAN 1. And the Windows 11 computer is in VLAN 2 and is connected to gigabit 102. So let's confirm that on switch 2, this is the switch that my Kali virtual machine is connected to. Show IP interface brief. Notice port 101 is up. That's the connection to my Kali virtual machine. Show interface gigabit 101 switch port. What you'll notice is there's the command. This interface is configured as static access. It's operating as static access and it's in the default VLAN, VLAN one. Now that's not a good idea. You don't wanna do that. You wanna actually use different VLANs to VLAN one. But in this example, the Kali virtual machine is connected to VLAN one on our trunk interfaces. So if I type show interface trunk, we are using 802.1Q trunking on the interfaces, gigabit 1010. That is the interface that connects switch two to switch one. The native VLAN is VLAN one. So the reason why this frame from the Kali virtual machine is not tagged in this case is because it's in VLAN one and that's the native VLAN on the trunk. So it's sent across untagged, but it can't get into the other VLAN because the PC is in a different VLAN. So on switch one, show IP interface brief, gigabit 102, that's this interface where the Windows 11 computer is connected to. Interface is up, up, show interface gigabit 102 switch port. This is configured in VLAN two. So VLANs look like they're working properly in this example. So let's have a look at the script first. I'm gonna open the script called hop broken in this example, we've got our ethernet frame at layer two, and we're going to add two 802.1Q frames. That's typically what you see with VLAN hopping examples, and this doesn't work. So just to prove that, sudo python hop broken.py. That's sent into the network. If we look at Wireshark on Kali, you can see that we've got two 802.1Q tags added. We've got VLAN one and we've got VLAN two. That's correct per our script. So if I cat hop broken.py, we are adding VLAN one and then we're adding VLAN two. That's exactly what we see here. The switch will not accept a tag that doesn't match the port. And I'll show you that in a moment. So it should accept the frame which it does. Notice on the link between the two switches where I've got my tap and I've got my MacBook connected, you can see that the frame was received, but the tags were removed. And this is what a lot of people will tell you. If you implement VLAN hopping, so you do a double tag, it doesn't work because the tags are stripped. But let me show you what I discovered. I'm going to open the script hop one to two dot py. And all I did here was add a third tag. So when testing things, don't believe what people tell you. Test various options. Rather than me just sending a frame with no tag or with one tag, 
or with two tags, I'm adding three tags here. So I've got three 802.1Q VLANs. This is the VLAN that the port is in, and this is the VLAN that I want to send it to. That's gonna be stripped, and this is the VLAN that I wanna send it to, and that's gonna go through the network. At the moment on my Windows 11 computer, no ICMP traffic is seen. I'm gonna run the script sudo python3 hop122.py. Notice an ICMP message was received on this PC, even though it's in a different VLAN. I have successfully hopped from one VLAN to another using a simple Python script. The trick here is to add three 802.1q tags, and then that allows me to hop to a separate VLAN. So let's go through the whole process. I sent the frame into the network. This is on the Kali virtual machine. Notice three tags. Outer tag is the tag that the port is in. And then I added two tags for the network that I wanna jump into. When it hits the switch, this switch is gonna strip the two outer tags. But what is it gonna forward across the link between the two switches? Notice on the Mac mini, I can see Ethernet 2 and I can still see the 802.1Q tag. That was preserved. The switch stripped the first two tags. The VLAN ID is VLAN 2. Source and destination IP addresses are here. ICMP message, and it was now received by the PC and the other VLAN. I'll do that again. Let's send the frame again. Notice the Windows 11 computer received the ICMP message. Now you'll notice that no response was received. But what I can do is inject traffic into another VLAN and get two devices to talk to each other as an example. So what I'll do here is add a Cisco router to the topology. I'm not routing from one VLAN to another. I'm simply injecting traffic into another VLAN. I'm just using a Cisco router in this example so that I can get the Cisco router and the Windows 11 computer to talk to each other. The Cisco router in this example show IP interface brief, has this IP address in VLAN 2, 10.1.2.254. Let's edit our script to get the router to talk to the PC. So what I'll do is rather than saying source equals two, I'll set that to three and set the destination to the router. So this will act as if the Windows 11 computer is pinging the router. Save that, run the script again. So we've got 10.1.2.3 going to 10.1.2.254. We'll have to, I might've been a bit too quick here. Let's make sure that the PC can ping the router. So can we ping 10.1.2.254? Okay, ping works. So let's try that again. And there you go. Notice I didn't wait long enough for spanning tree to converge. There's the message from the PC to the router and there's the message or reply from the router to the PC. And just to prove the point, I'll clear this and send that into the network. There is the traffic from the Windows 11 computer to the router. It's actually from my Kali virtual machine. And then the router's replying. So I can get these two devices to talk to each other in another VLAN, even if I'm in a separate VLAN. But you could create a simple loop and just send many, many packets into the network. So something simple like 4i in range 10, one, two, three, four, send packet. And I forgot to put that there. So colon, send that again. And notice we've sent a whole bunch of packets into the network. That's as if pings are sent from the PC to the router and the router replies. Okay, so that's a simple example of sending packets from one VLAN to another. But what I'll do now is move the PC to another VLAN. I'll move the PC to port three, which is in VLAN three. So on switch one, you can see gigabit 102 went down, gigabit 103 came up. So show IP interface brief. 103 is up, up. Show interface gigabit 103 switch port. Operational mode is static access. It's in VLAN three. I could actually just do show run interface gigabit 103 and you can see the configuration of the port. What I'll do is restart Wireshark. Now I've moved the PC, I haven't changed the IP addresses. Typically you would change the IP addresses, but all I'm gonna do now is edit that script. And what I'm gonna do here is change the VLAN to VLAN three. And what I'll do for the moment is remove the loop, save the script and run it again. And there you go, traffic was received by the Windows 11 computer, 
even though it's in a different VLAN. If we have a look at our Wireshark capture on Kali, notice VLAN one tag, VLAN three tag sent into the network. And notice on the PC, I actually see the message and a reply from the router. Now the router has interfaces in all VLANs. So it actually sends the traffic back into the network and you can see it's tagged as VLAN two, but it did reply back to the PC, which is interesting. So the PC is seeing the reply from the router. I'm basically messing around with the network. I've got this PC in VLAN one, the Kali virtual machine. I've got this PC in VLAN two, and I am hopping from VLAN one into VLAN two. Now, how do you mitigate this? The first thing you need to do is go onto your switches. So switch one and switch two and change the native VLAN. So if I look at switch one and scroll down, this switch was badly configured in that gigabit 1010 wasn't configured with a separate native VLAN. If I look at the other switch, switch two, show run interface gigabit 1010, it's configured as a trunk port and that's negotiated with the other side, but I didn't specify the native VLAN. So I should say switch port trunk native VLAN and let's use VLAN triple nine. So I'll copy that to the other switch, interface gigabit 1010, paste that in. So on switch one, show run interface gigabit 1010. That's our configuration. On switch two, show run interface gigabit 1010. That's our configuration. Show interface trunk, did they form a trunk? And the answer is yes, they did. On switch two, we've got gigabit 1010 trunking in VLAN triple nine. Now this interface 109 is actually the connection to the router. So show CDP neighbors, you can see that switch one is connected on gigabit 1010, and now I've got the router connected to 109. But the important part is this connection between the two switches. You should use a separate VLAN to the interfaces used on your PCs. So don't have VLAN one here and VLAN one here. Okay, so once we've done that, let's see what happens when we run exactly the same script again. We're trying to send traffic into the network, the same as before. In this example, it's VLAN one, VLAN three, VLAN three that's tagged. What happens on the link between the two switches? What you'll notice now is it keeps the three tags. That traffic is not sent to the Windows 11 computer. What's interesting, however, is the router still replies. So the router is replying with VLAN two in this example. So the router replies, but that's because it's got IP addresses in every VLAN. And I'm using VLAN one as the native VLAN to the router. The PC, however, doesn't receive that traffic. We have successfully mitigated that PC from talking to another VLAN. So the moral of the story is, make sure that the interfaces that connect to your hosts or your PCs is not using the same VLAN as the native VLAN on your trunks. Change your native VLANs on your trunks to something else. Let's make another change just to see what happens here. On the router, I have configured the native VLAN as VLAN one. So let's change that. So interface gigabit 001 encapsulation dot one triple nine and native will make that to the native VLAN. So show run, I'll filter for gig. This interface now has triple nine as the native VLAN. That means we need to change it on our switch connected to the router. So gigabit one zero nine and the command we wanna use is switch port trunk native VLAN triple nine. So show CDP neighbor. We see the router twice at the moment show interface trunk. We should see that trunking on both those interfaces is triple nine, which it is. Let's go back to our Kali virtual machine and send traffic into the network. Before I do that, I'll restart the capture on the MacBook. So send that into the network. Notice now we don't get a response. The router is not replying now because the native VLAN has been changed to a VLAN that's not being used elsewhere in the network. Tag of one, two and three is sent into the network. Neither the router nor the Windows computer replies to that because we've changed the native VLAN. I'll send the traffic into the network again. There's the ping from Kali to the router pretending to be the Windows 11 computer. Windows 11 computer doesn't see that traffic. The router is not replying to that traffic. Okay, so the moral of the story is 
make sure that you set your trunk ports to use a native VLAN not used by your access ports. So the ports connected to the PCs. You should put your PCs into other VLANs, not into VLAN 1. Avoid using VLAN 1 for connections to your access ports. Make sure that, as an example, the interface where the Kali virtual machine is, is in a separate VLAN, not a VLAN 1. So at the moment, as an example, show interface gigabit 101, switch port, that's VLAN 1. Let's set it to something else. So interface gigabit 101, switch port, access, VLAN, and I'll just set it to three as an example. Well, actually let's make it two, so it's in a separate VLAN to the Windows computer, which is currently in VLAN 3. If we try and run our script again, nothing is received by the PC in VLAN 3 and nothing is received on the trunk port because a separate VLAN number is used than the one that's received. So just so that it's not confusing, I'm going to show you what hop one to three looks like. I'll copy hop one to two to hop one to three. PCs in VLAN three at the moment. So nano hop one to three. This is the script that we've been using. We've been sending VLAN 1 and then double tagging VLAN 3. That's no longer going to work because we've changed the VLAN from VLAN 1 to VLAN 2. So again, show interface gigabit 101 switch port. That port is now in VLAN 2, not VLAN 1. So when I try and send that into the network, I'm sending VLAN 1 and then VLAN 3 twice that doesn't get accepted by the switch. Notice nothing on the link between the two switches because the traffic is blocked. However, if I know what I'm doing, I could simply edit that and let's set this to VLAN 2, the VLAN that I'm in. Run that again and what you'll notice is traffic is received on the link between the two switches, but it doesn't go to the Windows 11 computer because of the tags being stripped. Now, okay, this is actually interesting. This is not what I saw before. I saw all the tags preserved. Let's run that again and see if we can circumvent this. So I'm sending VLAN 2, VLAN 3, VLAN 3. In my test before, that didn't work. This is what I saw before. VLAN 2, VLAN 3, VLAN 3. For some reason, the previous one stripped VLAN 2, but this is the behavior that I've seen. It preserves all the VLANs. So on the port, that's not a native VLAN. It actually preserves all the VLANs. It doesn't matter how you stack it. VLAN hopping is gonna fail. So if I remove the one tag, and just set it as a double tag. Both those tags are preserved and the PC doesn't receive the traffic. Now I've shown you in a previous video, which I'll link below, how you can stack multiple packet types. And we could do something similar here. So you could try things and see if you can break the network. So I'll stack a whole bunch of VLAN 3 and send that into the network. On my MacBook, the link between the two switches, I'm seeing all those tags, VLAN 2, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3 but it doesn't get through. I've stopped the Kali virtual machine from breaking into other VLANs by not using the native VLAN, making sure that the native VLAN on my trunk ports is set to a VLAN that's not used in the network. Okay, that was a very long video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I am trying to give you a lot of technical detail with Python and Scapy and show you how to hack networks and then also show you how to mitigate this kind of nonsense in networks. If you enjoy these types of videos, please like this video, consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and clicking on the bell to get notifications. I'm David Bombal and I wanna wish you all the very best.